but um, you know, I'm I'm I have lived a very colorful life, <laughs> a very interesting life. All right, what else do we have in that quest line, or did we finish it? We may have finished it because it gave me. It said something about a cosmetic, and I really wasn't paying attention. I need to probably go look up what it told me that I got, because I was when I talk sometimes I don't pay attention. It I could I could swear it said something about crafting a cosmetic item, like a helmet or something. And I have no idea what that means or how to do that. Let me look up this quest really quick. Yeah, I didn't have any family support either, Brett. It's totally doable. Um, this is my... Let's see. I went from the construction company to a writing business to the travel blog which became um, the travel blog became a much bigger thing that became an overarching umbrella that housed writing guidebooks doing photography doing videography doing public speaking doing marketing engagements doing consultations Chris and I the eight years that we lived in Cancun we ran the Airbnb for about four of those years and Chris did tours and stuff and then also in between that was um, we had it, we haven't we, we got rid of the website and everything we used to run something called uh, Cancun Apartment Rentals. So we had a consultation agency where maybe about half a dozen clients a year would come in. They would like go to the website, they'd read my travel guide, they'd come to Cancun, they'd have fun, they'd go, we want to move here. And then we were on site to do, basically, you show up, we take you out in a vehicle, we show you subdivisions, we show you this is what you can get for this price, this is what you can get that you can go over here and live over here, this is what life's like in the subdivision, this was what it's like over in the hotel zone. And then we would take that and in some cases the people would go, okay, we're good to go, we want to do this. Um, and in other cases we would go beyond that and actually help them find an accommodation, like ha actually help them find like a rental unit and stuff. And then it was all commission based and it was you know a percentage of what their final rent cost was like whatever their lease deal was or their rental agreement we got a percentage of that on top of our upfront fee we used to we've done all sorts of stuff along the way you know i've done game dev i've founded two game studios we launched an mmorpg i've launched a tabletop book i've written like i think 12 travel books and then i've done two fantasy novels and a sci-fi fantasy anthology um, I just started doing this for a living two and a half years ago. I've always done gaming and stuff, but this was me. I got done. Um, I used to do, I was doing marketing for like six, seven years as, you know, kind of the main thing for travel companies. And, um, the last startup I worked for, um, just, they got bought out by investors and it was, I just was like, I'm not. I don't want to go do freelancing anymore. I've been doing it for, you know, 20 plus years. I'm done. I also grew up on a dairy farm, was homeschooled for several years. My dad had a construction company and a dairy farm. So he was a third generation ceramic tile and natural stone contractor. So I grew up from the time I was like four years old, bucking hay, driving tractors, shoveling cow shit, milking cows, you know, working with the vet and just working from the time I was five. So I think by the time I got to 40, I was like, <laughs> I'm done. I've had my time in the workforce. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to be done. Um, somebody at the door? Who is it? Is it Lucas? Oh, it's Smeagol crying. So Brett, Brett's a good example. I mean, you don't have to have, I mean, multiple businesses, wife and kids. The only thing we don't have is kids. We don't, we don't have any kids. Um, it's a little different. 
uh, Chris just literally sat here from the bed and she said, yeah, but you've got eight cats and all the chickens. And I was like, this is true. This goes back to why we're not traveling right now because we did all of our traveling and now we have the homestead. So it's like the homestead is everything for us right now. We're literally just, it's like, I kind of did all the traveling and stuff when I was younger. And now it's like, I'm 40 and mid forties. It's like, now it's like this place is taken care of. And now it's time to set up our pension and, make sure that we're well taken care of in our in our final years so we are literally just hunkered down in work mode i've talked about this in a few places also in our in our member videos on youtube um i got sidetracked again my camera just went out of focus But literally, we're just hunkered down. We've, we've, we're trying to get five more years is what we're willing to put in, and then we're done. We want to be done by the time we're 50. So we've, we've both got like essentially five and a half years left that we're willing to, to work. I think Chris said, what was it yesterday? Uh, we're no longer ki so <laughs> up until this year, we always would just we would walk to the grocery store and like, I mean, we would come back loaded up with like. You know, a 10 pound bag, you know, a 10 kilo bag, a 20 pound bag of cat litter in one backpack and, you know, groceries in each hand. And, you know, we just walk back because we're both fairly, we're fairly fit. I mean, I'm a, I'm more pudgy than my wife is. My wife is a beanpole because she works outside all day. She literally just works with the chickens and the yard and the cats. And she does all the cooking and most of the shopping and walks around all the time. And I sit here. I still am active pretty much every day, but like, um. I think she, it was yesterday or the day before. It was like, yeah, I'm, we're not we're not carrying stuff back anymore. We're we're doing taxis from now because we don't have a vehicle, you know. So it's like we don't need one. But it's like so we've <laughs> we're no longer carrying all that shit back. It's like we're, we've graduated. We have now graduated to uh, if it's just you know a few blocks away, that's one thing. But like the closest grocery store is about a 20 minute walk. And so it's like, yeah, we're taking taxis back from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was the name of the quest we just did? Dreams of the Deep. I want to see what that final reward was because it missed it when it crossed across the screen. Um, the Lost Bathy Sphere Helmet. That's what I. That's what I missed. So what is that? Our man says, 64 traveled many places in the world just to try. Traveling is a gift. Um, I highly recommend that everybody out there get out and travel. It's it's really worth it. Brett says, I was homeschooled for some years as well. Not my... F and the problem was, so my sister is homeschooling, but my sister's homeschooling for good reasons. Um, my parents, unfortunately, homeschooled me because they were terrified of the world because they thought it was an evil place. And my parents were like, for better or for worse... You know, everybody makes mistakes. It's all good. But like my parents were definitely in that religious bracket and they moved us out into the middle of the woods and put us in a, you know, private school for a few years. And then it was a very religious environment and then wanted to homeschool us because the world was evil. And those were not fun years. Several years of being homeschooled because the world was a bad place and I had no friends. And my only, my only you know, escape was the library because I could get fantasy and science fiction novels and, like, lose myself in those. Miner says, my cousin always says, no one leaves alive from this world. I always keep that in my hearth. It's very true. Haley Geek says, happy to see you in one of my favorite games. I'm having a lot of fun, Haley. Glad to see you here. Michael Perigo says, crazy me, I was just in my 20s, now the 30s go by so fast, I'll be 40. It, they do go by fast, man. <laughs> Amy says, I don't really have a bucket list. I'm getting back into RPGs at 35s away away from gaming. Found a group of 10 guys that play in person every week. Dude, TTRPG is the way to go, man. If you're doing tabletop stuff, that's awesome. This is a sweet planet, Nathan. I'm very happy with this planet. Haley Geek says, it's customization for your character. You can do that at space stations. Oh, so I have to I have to leave. I was just looking this up online to figure out what I needed to do with that. So I would go up to the space station at that character customization thing that we 
looked at like four or five days ago. Okay, I want to go up and check this out because we got that helmet. <laughs> Brett's like, are we certain we didn't pass cross paths in our release? I mean, I don't think so because I don't know. I don't, I don't think I've ever known anyone in Brett in my life. Come here, Spiegel. Oh, he's just hungry. You want to come here and say hi to everybody? Or are you just shopping for food? <laughs> oh, you're just shopping for food, aren't you? He's literally sitting outside the office door. He, so I don't normally stream at night. And so it's like probably 9 o'clock right now. And so my cats are very much like, what is going on? It's 8 o'clock. They're very confused by daddy doing stuff in the office at this hour. Um, all right, let me stretch out, and then we're going to go up to the um, space station. I want to see this helmet. Michael Perigo says, just wanted to say, I know you're only playing No Man's Sky temporary slash long term, but your honest and open opinion of the game has made me subscribe. Nice to see non-tainted opinion of the game. Well, I appreciate that. Um, not Mennonite. No, thank God, no. Although that guy on TikTok... Um, Nate Perowski or Perinsky, I forget his last name, but he runs that big homesteading channel on TikTok. He's his background is Mennonite, and he's got some equally scary stories about upbringing. Um, let's go up and check out this helmet. Ooh, it looks cool. I just saw the screenshot on the interwebs. I know I could take the portal, but I like launching my ship. Sometimes it's nice to just, like, fast travel, and other times it's it's fun to take off. Well, I'm technically, I always say I'm on central time, but technically there is no time zone change where, where I live, so I always just say central. I'm actually on mountain right now, and whenever the clocks change, I'll be back on central. But I always just, everything I say about my stream announcements, everything is always just central. But Mexico got rid of time zone changes, or not time zone changes, they got rid of daylight savings. Um, I don't remember now, a few years ago, um, they were like, we're no longer participating in daylight savings. It's amazing. It, it, it can be confusing when you have, so like, when I do raid nights and stuff, when I participate in my MMO activities, I have to always like set alarms for like the first couple of weeks after there's a time change because I always forget and it's like sometimes I'm an hour late, hour early. I've done that before. I've been like, oops, sorry guys. Doesn't happen too often anymore, but. Have I had any No Man's Sky dreams? Oh no, 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 no. I, I typically don't dream video games. Haven't in a long time. Appearance modifier. So this is gonna be the helmet. How do I find head? Helmet type. Helmet Alpha. Oh, wow. I haven't ever really looked through all of these before. Yeah, he, I was telling the stream, he's confused because I'm, no, I'm normally not streaming right now, so he's like... What's daddy doing? <laughs> Where do I find this helmet, guys? Um, number 11, is this it? Nope. Where the heck? Someone said check number 14. Aha! Well, it's cool looking, but I would need some sort of gear to go with it because it's hideous by itself. And also, that's only ever going to work for, like, one specific thing. Ten is the helmet, I think, that is the default, right? Let's 
Some of these are ridiculous looking. Oh my goodness. That's not bad. I mean, just, I think this one's pretty cool, though, like the default hammer, the, the helmet, not... No, I don't want to apply any changes. All right, cool. All right. Um, Nate Petrowski, that's the one I'm thinking of, Brett, exactly. Yeah, his story about getting in the way for the Mennonites. I was actually showing Chris last night um, his whole interaction because we have a bunch of cats, and because we do have a vet, we have two small vet clinics in our town. Actually, there's three. We found the third one. That's the one we just found down the street, so there's three. Um, but the problem is they're small vets, and they don't work holidays, and they don't work at nights, and there's no emergency vet where we live. So if something happens to your animals on a holiday weekend or uh, during the middle of the night, like, you're screwed. Like... The nearest emergency vet is, I think, probably two and a half, three hours away in Mia. I don't think there's even one in Palenque or Tenosique. Probably Mia. What's that? Yeah, so two and a half hours probably would be the nearest place to go to. And when you're in our situation where we don't own a vehicle, we don't need one because we walk everywhere and stuff, take taxis and the like, um, taking your animal to an emergency vet is out of the question it's when it's the middle of the night or on a holiday weekend right so there are circumstances and we watched nate go through this well i did anyway i was catching chris up on this last night in bed on tiktok it was a couple of weeks back but he had one of his cats something happened she got bit or something and um, her eyes swelled up and he got into it with like these crazy people on tiktok who were like um wanting him to euthanize the animal and like yelling at him for not taking it to the vet and he's like it's the 4th of July there's nobody open I'm like three hours away from anybody there's no emergency vets like I've talked to him we've got a live stream set up they've seen him on video here's the funny thing where we live I'm so glad we don't publish that kind of stuff on our homestead channel because I would I would get eaten alive by those people um, and I would end up having the same interactions he had because we have taken our animals into the 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 better it's the best vet, vet clinic in town that we found so far there's one more we're going to go try one time um and we've gone in and it's just the vet tech well where's the vet well she's three hours away in the city doing you know on call or something and so our vet tech is literally in there with one of our animals and he's literally just taking pictures and photo, taking pictures and videos through WhatsApp and sending them to the vet and getting instructions on what he's supposed to do. So we kind of bypassed that. And Chris now has, for a while now, we've had the direct. We have, we just, we just send pictures and videos straight to the WhatsApp, and we're like, "Hey, what do you think about this? Should we? Are we good to just, you know, dress it or whatever?" And we only take the animals in if there's like an emergency. We've had a few emergencies, and hopefully not anymore knock on wood but you know it's like i also grew up on a farm and i've doctored animals most of my life like i don't go to the vet i don't need to take an animal to the vet unless it's something like oh no there's a like with pippin you know yeah lucas has had multiple like lucas got uh when he was younger and he was still out exploring like he came home one time with his hind leg he, he had a he had a cat fight or a, somebody or a dog got a hold of him. I mean his his knee on his back, one of his back legs was not good. Like it was gashed open and it was he had like four big you know it was not a nice thing. And I literally was like, all the vet's gonna do is they're gonna stitch this one, um, probably, and the other ones they're just gonna cover. So I just covered it, wrapped him, and he was pissed off for four or five days because of the bandages and after that he was five he was in bandages for three weeks and his leg was all fine but then like when dora came home last year with her the foot accident that we had to take to surgery because she had broken she lost her three she still has her two claws but she lost the three fingers and the dot the vet had to go in and pull the chunks of bone out that kind of stuff you have to go to the vet for you know but it's like 
you know, you doctor animals if you're going to have a homestead and animals and stuff. Yeah, his... They, they totally... End, and I, I like the fact that one of the ladies came back and apologized to him. Um... Michael Perigo says, Never did dreams the deep. Is it a full quest line or just the lost crew and building tutorial? It's a full quest line, but it's also the lost crew and building tutorial. Like, the whole quest is you're finding the lost crew, and along the way, you're getting all the blueprints um, along the way. I think it took me... It wasn't that long. It was only like six or eight steps, I feel. It was a little bit yesterday and a little bit today, so maybe four, three... I don't know. Maybe four hours of total time. I don't really know. Well, at the very least, we cleared that quest line out of my log now, and I got... Um, let's look at it real quick. Oh, can I not build it? I can't bring the build menu up from up here, so we need to go back to the planet real quick. Ooh, we should... You know what I think we're going to finish up the night with? is Here in a minute, we're going to go look at ships. We're going to go visit some space stations and see if I can't come across a ship, maybe. A ship upgrade. That black one we saw today, I totally should have bought. I had the money for it, and I just wasn't paying attention. All right, let's go. Um, I, I want to check out one thing before we go. We got a whole bunch of aquatic structures. Where are those going to be at? Right here. Square underwater chamber. Deep water chamber. Vertical glass tunnel. Uh, Alright, here's a question for those of you who do base building. Um, someone mentioned earlier that you can connect these cylindrical rooms and deep water chambers to each other because they have ladders. So, can you stack them, like, infinitely? Or can you only stack two together and that's it? Or can I stack three, four, five... You can keep going. So, here here is a here is an interesting thought I just had for base building stuff. We're not going to do it right now, but I'm Take a look at this. Cuz I have this room down here. that I was I put the, the cylindrical room in here I put one of these cylindricals in here right right the door is without power right now because it's only running on the one battery and whatever we'll fix that long term but I've put this one cylinder here so theoretically I could go straight down from that if I need a switch I didn't need a switch earlier I was able to get in completely fine Like, I don't know why it's not working right now. Because it, before, the door was just open. Anyway, before I get sidetracked. Um, so, theoretically... Well, how come I didn't need a switch earlier? Michael says you're, you're playing in the first person the whole time? I li yeah, I do like first person. Um... For most of my games, it's more immersive. I don't mind third person, but if you give me the option, I'm almost always going to pick first person. The exception um, was um, Red Dead Redemption 2. I really like third person in that game. I don't like the first person. I really like third person. Uh, Haley Geek says, I have a build walkthrough on my demo channel. Awesome. 
Um, first person mode is weird. Uh, infinitely, as long as you're connecting ladders, you can keep stacking. So are the, are the ladders automatic? Or how does this work? Because one thing I did do... Hang on, let me go back to this. Is I put my... Um, Alright, someone says I need a switch. I don't know that I have found out how to make a switch. So... So if I wanted to, I could take this and I could connect it. The camera angles are going to kill me here. Um, free mode. So if I could figure out how to come in here, I would have to dig in a little bit. Is that automatically connecting right now? Like that? It's snapping, isn't it? Somebody said toggle wiring. Oh, so that's what I had done. So that's that's connecting underneath just like that. So I could theoretically put that there and then put one underneath it and work my way down all the way down to the bottom. I wouldn't have an elevator, but I would have ladders that I could climb all the way down through the center of this with. That's going to work. That's going to work just fine. Because then what I could do is on each level, I could have a storeroom and have each level be a different type of room one can be the lab one can be the kitchen one can be i could totally live with that yeah maybe just all be storerooms yeah like a walking elevator and then just get down to the big one that we build underwater um because then we can get to the square you know by the time we get down to the bottom as an example hang on i need to get back to the free camera before i screw myself up here because by the time we got down to here, we could have this built out, and then we could just start expanding the base from here. Because we could, um, we have these um, tunnels now we can make. Yeah, it's going to be figuring out how to make it work, and then also finagling with things. Ooh, can I? Sheer curiosity. Where are you beaming the window to? I don't even see it. Oh, it's just a panel. It says a window made from glass, so, but I can't even see it anywhere to like place it. Or is it only snap to a structure? It must only strap to a s snap to a structure. I was hoping that I could, like, put this into the wall of the... Of the rock. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. 